Welcome to Cisco AMP Visibility, a new threat intelligence and incident response tool from Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions Group. AMP Visibility combines multiple Cisco datasets, including global threat intelligence data and your organization's logged events. It allows you to quickly and easily search that combined collection, enabling you to speed up triage and investigation processes. It also allows you to pivot on the return data for more context and, in some cases, quick preventative action. My name is Ben Greenbaum, and in this video we will go over the features of AMP Visibility, demonstrate some of its capabilities, and show you some example use cases of this tool. AMP Visibility reduces complexity and time to respond. We all have more data sources, more sensors, and more controls than ever before. AMP Visibility combines data from external threat data sources and internal sensors to present relevant, actionable data quickly. It provides a unified console in which to view and act on that intelligence that has utility in all stages of an ongoing attack. Most importantly, it speeds up your team by reducing the latency inherent in switching between multiple tools to perform common tasks. AMP Visibility accomplishes all of this by using a modular design, where each module is responsible for a single tool or data source. The module is the building block of visibility data access and response actions. Each one handles an external resource, which can be a data set or a response capability, or both. Let's have a look at the AMP Visibility console. We'll start with a quick example. We'll replicate a common task. We get an advisory from a threat intelligence provider or a government agency, or we get some information from our peers on a mailing list. And we want to find out quickly if we've been affected or if we've seen the indicators listed. Let's search for a file hash. The first thing you'll probably notice is this graph showing that file and the relationships between that file and some other observables. Across the top, we have an informational bar showing that the results included one internal target on which that file had been seen and one matched observable, the file hash that we searched for. That number is then broken down into the different types of main observables. This will be more meaningful when we do larger investigations. And on the far right, we have the number of modules that contributed to this data set in the graph. Let's go back to that relationship graph. This graph quickly and intuitively shows the results from your search and how they are related to each other and to other additional observables. You can also click on any item in the graphic to get more details in the left panel. In this case, we can see on the left that this hash was seen targeting my local machine and when it was first and last seen doing so. We see this big computer icon with a target on it, which means that something in our own network has been targeted, as we know. We can click on that to get additional information in the left panel, including the host name, the IP and MAC addresses, the operating system, etc. And you might notice all of these info icons throughout, these little gray circles with an eye in them. This is one of the real strengths of AMP visibility because you can click on any one of them to get a list of available actions that can be taken across your installed modules and the security technologies for which they are responsible. The actions that are available are dependent on the modules you have installed and the type of observable that you clicked on. Looking at some of the different observable types that we have in this graph, we have the file icon showing a file hash, we have file paths denoted by a folder and file names denoted by a tag shaped icon. For each of these observables, we also have three possible states, clean, malicious, or unknown. This information can help you quickly and easily understand intuitively what is being shown to you in this graph. And as I mentioned, each observable type has its own list of actions that are dependent on what type it is and what modules you have installed. So let's click on the info icon for this file name, monkeys.swf.exe. And for every type of observable, we have two options. You can copy it to the clipboard for use outside the tool, and you can start a new investigation based off of that. So here we see the file name monkeys.swf.exe, we see that it has been seen on that target endpoint, and we see that it has been associated with the file that we started the investigation with, but you can easily pivot to new pieces of information simply clicking on the investigate button. Back in the original investigation now and looking at that original file hash for which we searched, let's click the info icon and see what our options are here. Now because this is a file, and because I am an AMP for Endpoints user with my AMP for Endpoints module configured here in AMP Visibility, I can add it to an AMP for Endpoints block list right here from the Visibility interface. 
So I'm gonna add that to the block list immediately. It executes the action. And now when the menu comes back, you can see that my option is to remove it from that block list. We can also look up this file's trajectory in AMP for Endpoints and see where it has been in our network. Let's go there. Here we are in the AMP for Endpoints console with that file hash preloaded. You can see the reports of it having been seen on my one computer and we can see when it was added and by what, the full parent chain, all the usual file trajectory events. And because I have enabled the AMP visibility beta under the management menu here, I now get an AMP visibility context item on any file hash from where I can pivot into AMP visibility with search results for that file hash preloaded. Going back to AMP for endpoints, let's have a look at that block list and verify that the file hash we just added via AMP visibility is on it. So here is the block list that I've configured to be writable from AMP visibility. It has one file on it currently. Let's view the changes. And here in the most recent change, we see that that file hash has been added to the block list. So let's go back to AMP visibility and see what our other available actions are. We can also search for this file hash in AMP. And that takes us to the AMP for endpoints search page with that file hash already loaded. Going back to the AMP visibility console, still looking at the options for this file. I am a threat grid user. I have my threat grid module configured for AMP visibility. So I can also look at this file in threat grid. And that takes you to the artifact details page in threat grid where you can look at all of the available information about this hash. We can download it. We can resubmit it if we want to use Glovebox to interact with it or to see what it does on a different operating system maybe. And we can inspect the details of any sample analysis in which it was observed. And back in AMP visibility, the last option in the file actions menu is to view this file in Umbrella. And there you see the investigate page in Umbrella with the file hash already loaded. Going back to AMP visibility, let's save this investigation in case we need it later and then clear it and start a new one. Let's start by just copying the hash, save snapshot, we'll give it a name. Add a description and save it and click on new investigation. We previously took a single hash and entered it by itself, a fairly straightforward search for sure. You can also take a snippet of a log file with no specific format and paste it directly into AMP Visibility's investigate page. The tool will strip out IP addresses, domains, and file hashes. This graph is much busier and shows all three of the observables that were pulled out of the text. I also want to point out that you can zoom and pan and move things around to be able to get the view that you need and to be able to see all of the elements in the graph or organize them as you see fit. What we can see from this very quickly is that our IP address here is known to be malicious, that it's been hosting many, many domains in addition to the one that we saw, and that many of those domains are known to be malicious, that the domain that we saw has been serving many, many different files and has also been seen across many IP addresses. But interestingly, the file that we saw come from it has not previously been seen at that domain or at that IP address. A lot of information that we can gain in a very short period of time by just pasting a log line into AMP visibility. In our previous search, we did not see a domain. So let's click on this on the info icon and we can go through what our options are here. We can search for this domain in AMP for endpoints. We can search for it in Talos Intelligence and we can view it in Threat Grid and in Umbrella where we can also block this domain entirely. Let's search for it in Talos Intelligence. And in the Talos Intelligence Portal, we have the domain loaded here, and we can see that it is in Poland, that it is owned by this group, that it has a poor reputation for illegal activities, and that it is on the Talos Security Intelligence Blacklist for malware. Back in AMP Visibility, we can also block this domain in Umbrella. It executes the action in Umbrella on our behalf, and when the menu comes back, now it says that we can unblock this domain. We can also view the domain in the Umbrella interface. Where we can see the domain details, such as the fact that the IP address that it resolves to is already blocked, the domain is already in the block list, the ASN score is suspicious, a number of other indicators that Umbrella used to mark this domain as suspicious or malicious, the histogram, 
and a treasure trove of additional details should they be desired. We can also verify that it does make it into the block list through AMP visibility. Here's our AMP visibility integration, see domains, and there we see it. Our domain has been added to the AMP visibility integration block list in Umbrella. So far, we've spent a fair amount of time in the relationship graph exploring the features and capabilities that are available here. But while it's a very powerful tool, there's more to AMP visibility than just the graph. There's the timeline of sightings directly below the graph that shows us when historically malicious behavior was seen from these observables. In this case, we can see a spike in late 2016 and then sustained but lesser malicious behavior since then. And below that, we have the detailed findings section. Here you see each of the matched observables from our search with a number of tabs beneath for judgments, verdicts, sightings, and indicators. A judgment associates a disposition with an observable. It's valid for an explicit time span, and it says essentially that this observable is malicious or unknown or clean, a reason will be given, the source of the information is given, a severity rating, a confidence rating, how widely you can share the information via the Industry Standard Traffic Light Protocol, or TLP, and when this judgment expires. Now, a verdict is the current or most recent judgment for an observable. So each of these modules has its disposition that is the current or most recent and is therefore the verdict, and these have expirations as well. Sightings is simply a report that the observable has been seen and why. So similar to the previous two, we have the module that saw it, the confidence level associated, a description of the sighting, the source of the sighting, any relations that are relevant to the sighting, and when it was last observed. And if you click to show the remainder of the results, you see a more complete list, including some virus total results, which is the module that we haven't yet seen in this video. Additionally, you see our little information icons throughout the interface down here. If you need to get more information about something that catches your attention in the details pane, you don't have to go back up and find it in the graph. You can go to that enrichment and actions menu right here from the details pane. And if we click on indicator, an indicator is a pattern of behavior or a set of conditions. An IP address by itself or a domain by itself is not an indicator, it's an observable, but it can be part of an indicator. For example, connecting to that IP or connecting to that domain can be an indicator. In this case, the indicator is that in ThreatGrid, samples that were seen connecting to sinkhole IP addresses had requested this domain and in response got this sinkhole IP address. And that is a good run-through of the first page of AMP Visibility. We are currently in Investigate, and to be fair, that's where the majority of the functionality for this tool resides, is right on the first page in the Investigate results. There's also Snapshots to the right, which is simply the investigations that you have saved. You can see the one that I just saved earlier in this video is right here. These can be shared between your teammates as well. They can be accessed by anybody in your organization and vice versa. And to the right of Snapshots is Explore Intel, which is a way to do a free text search against the collected AMP Global Threat Intelligence Database. For example, if you wanted to know what indicators is AMP aware of that have to do with PowerShell, you could just do that search and get a lot of information about malicious use of PowerShell. Or if you feel like you've been seeing a lot of suspicious activity from the .trade top-level domain, search for it in Judgments, and you can see a list of domains at the .trade TLD that have had judgments against them for various reasons, as well as how recently those judgments were made. To the right of Explorer Intel is Modules, and this is the page where you add and configure the modules that make AMP visibility work. AMP Visibility comes with three modules by default, AMP Global Intel, AMP File Reputation, and Talos Intelligence, and you can add others for other products for which you have licenses or API keys, for example, AMP for Endpoints, obviously, Umbrella and ThreatGrid we talked about, and VirusTotal, which is a third-party service, but they do offer API keys to the public for both licensed and unlicensed users. To add a new module, you simply click the big button that says Add New Module, and then you choose what kind of module it is that you're going to be adding and configure it based on the directions that you receive over here. AMP Visibility is a new tool currently in beta. 
As we continue to add new modules that allow you to tie into your additional Cisco and third-party products and accounts, the enrichment and orchestration capabilities of AMP visibility will only get better from here. And then the last thing I want to show you in the interface is the help documentation, which is quite thorough and should give you guidance and answers to any questions you may have in the course of using AMP visibility. To recap, AMP visibility can save you and your team time when you need it most. Use it to streamline operations while you research and respond to the threats of today and tomorrow across a broad and expanding suite of unified tools and workflows. AMP customers are invited to join the beta now in progress by visiting the beta features link in the AMP for Endpoints management menu. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and we hope you enjoy using AMP visibility.